so the thermal management by using heat pipe technology involves conventional heat pipe closed loop pulsating heat pipe so this uh, devices are actually used for transferring heat within a short distance so we'll see in detail how these devices are used for thermal management of uh, electronics as well as some other methods for cooling now these are the learning objective to know various cooling techniques for thermal management to study various heat pipe working principle and parameters affecting the performance to study the various applications of heat pipe in electronic cooling so this is the thing which we will discuss in detail in this particular session now electronic cooling methods early in earlier days this electronic cooling methods was done by natural convection or by a force convection as you are aware of the natural convection in which the cooling of the electronic devices takes place because of natural flow fluid second it is a force convection in force convection the external fans can be used just like in case of laptops you might observe the fans which are installed for the cooling purpose so first one it is a natural convection second one it is a force convection so that was a single phase technology that was used in some earlier days then a two phase technology can involves pool boiling falling gel liquid jet impingement spray mist cooling flow boiling so this was comes under two phase technologies where the phase two phases was present now next thing a latest one it is a special technology which uses thermoelectric devices heat pipes various of various designs and pulsating heat pipes the drinking bird is a popular toy which has amused generations of children now this is the basic behind the pulsating heat pipe now this toy actually the reason for the development in the pulsating heat pipe now how uh, we we'll see this uh, toy first now with this toy you can observe there are two things first one it is a head and second one it is a tail and this head and tail is actually connected with the help of one tube so this is joining this head and tail now second thing uh, other thing you can observe is uh, you will observe a red fluid inside so that is a methylene chloride which is having a quite less boiling point than water so the methylene chloride has boiling point nearly around 40 degree celsius so that's quite less value whereas the water has a boiling point 100 so what happens uh, there are a sustained oscillations we can see upright up and down movement of this particular duck we are not having any external power still he say the bird the duck starts drinking water again it comes upright and again it is start drinking water so how this is actually happening so we'll see in this detail now first thing has to be understood is the head of the duck is actually covered with a fuzzy cloth then inside of that we can observe a red fluid is already there and we have a tube which is connecting that head as well as the tail now first thing is whenever the water it is drink whenever the duck is drinking water or it seems like a drinking water so in such case what happens the water it is in contact with the methylene chloride over the glass tube so so what happens the methylene chloride it expands and because of this expansion so the more amount of fluid will be available in the tail that pushes the bird upright so we see the bird seems to um, goes upright because of this in second case what happens when the bird goes upright the fuzzy cloth which is attached over there so whatever the water absorbed by this fuzzy cloth now it evaporates and once this is evaporates the head of the duck subjected to low pressure inside and because of this low pressure what will happen the high pressure which is available and the other end that is in the tail pushes the liquid which is available that is a red liquid methylene chloride forward and in that case what happens again the fluid is coming towards the head and that result in a downward motion of the duck so this is in this way we look like the duck is drinking the water but one thing has to be remember there is no such direct contact of that red fluid and the water the duck is not at all drinking the water it is just coming in contact through the glass tube so there is no such direct contact and this evaporation is actually responsible for creating low pressure inside and this low pressure uh, whatever is taking place at the head and the high pressure at the tail so that pushes the 
red liquid that is a methylene chloride towards the head and that results in a sustained oscillation and that's why we used to observe the the bird or we can say the drinking bird starts drinking water so this is how we say the basic thing which is behind the pulsating heat pipe so the phenomena of pulsating heat pipe is the is comes from this drinking bird now this is a conventional heat pipe in a conventional heat pipe you can observe there is evaporator section there is a condenser section and this evaporator and condenser section are separated by anabatic section so in evaporator section a section it is absorbed in the condenser section it is rejected so no heat is absorbed or rejected in between the anabatic section and because of the gravity the whatever the liquid which is formed after condensing that is again coming back to the evaporator section and this process continues so this is the example of a conventional heat pipe so you can observe with the help of uh, the image which is at the at the bottom you can say one two three process so the process is continuous then this is the example of a conventional heat pipe so again this is an example of conventional heat pipe if you run this animation what will you observe the fluid the vapors are formed this vapor going towards the condenser section and it is coming back towards the evaporator section then again it is a loop heat pipe so loop heat pipe if you observe again so loop heat pipe is generally considered for the heat pipe which is whose ends are closed so in that cases it will be called as a loop heat pipe so this is an example where the heat is absorbed heat is rejected so we say a cool a two working fluids which are coming in contact so heat exchange process is actually taking place so this is an example of one of the loop heat now next one is a case of open and closed loop pulsating heat pipe so there are two cases one is open loop heat pipe second one is a closed loop pulsating heat pipe so the closed loop pulsating heat pipe both ends ends are closed in case of open loop pulsating heat pipe both the ends are actually not closed so you can see n number of turns in between so there can be n number of turns for a closed loop pulsating heat pipe as well as a open loop pulsating heat pipe provided that both the both the ends are actually joined together with respect to each other in case of a closed loop pulsating heat pipe so the complete fluid flow visualization can be observed in case of a closed loop pulsating heat pipe again some filling wall is always provided but using a filling wall sometimes create kind of drawbacks maybe because the leakage of fluid to the surrounding so over the period of time the leakage of fluid will always takes place towards the surrounding so having a filling wall it's one of the good option for having a multiple fluids in a same heat pipe but that also create some kind of disadvantages in terms of leakage of fluid that can takes place over the period of time next thing this is the animation again so this is one of the simulation which say shows how the fluid flow is actually developed once the heating is started in the evaporator section and how the fluid is rejecting heat into the condenser section so this is the animation which is uh, prepared with the help of ansys 2019 release 2 version the working of pulsating heat pipe depends on the three principles i can observe there are three principle first one is thermodynamic principle second one fluid dynamic and last one is the heat transfer principle now first thing has to be understood is we have a heat pipe which is heated in the evaporator section then heat is rejected in the condenser section in between that we have a adiabatic section so what happens once heat is given into the evaporator section the water starts converted into steam so while well, during this process as we have some 30 to 70% of the filling ratio so with this what alternate liquid and vapor slug starts formation this formation will goes towards the, the this alternate liquid and vapor slug move towards the capillary tube or diameter is comparatively less and that results in the alternate liquid and vapor slug which are moving so what happens the alternate liquid and vapor slug means we have sensible heat also we have latent heat also sensible heat it associates with the liquid we have latent heat which is associated with vapor slug so the we can say the fluid flow is actually developed and that results in the fluid which is moving from evaporator section to the condenser section so this happens against the gravity so we say 
sensible it is also involved that it is also involved then uh, this uh, you can see the flow against the gravity is taking place because of difference of temperature difference of pressure that results in the flow of fluid from evaporate section to the condenser section so the fluid dynamic principle is involved we have uh, we can say next thing is the heat transfer principle what we have the fluid which is available in the evaporator section it is uh, there is a copper tube and copper tube inside the copper tube we have a working fluid so we have to take a water bath or any other you can say fluid which is transferring heat to the copper tube and copper tube is transferring heat to the inside fluid which is available now this inside fluid that is alternate liquid and vapor slugs are formed once heat is given then this alternate liquid and vapor slug move towards the condenser section there again it rejects the heat to the again uh, the fluid which is available in the condenser section so we have a heat transfer principle means heat is absorbed at one place heat is rejected at the other place so heat is absorbed in the evaporator section heat is rejected in the condenser section the fluid dynamic principle it is basically the flow of fluid which is taking place against the gravity so that is because of difference of pressure which is created in the evaporator section and the condenser section Now the parameters which are affecting the performance of closed loop pulsating effect. First one is tube diameter. The diameter of tube is selected uh, approximately as 2 to 3 mm because the capillary action should take place in the closed loop pulsating effect. So diameter is one of the important parameters because the liquid and vapor slug will flow through it. So the tube diameter is one of the critical diameter of 2 mm is already selected for pulsating effect. Working fluid also is one of the important parameters. If the, if the boiling point of working fluid is quite less, if the boiling point of working fluid is quite high, so that is also affects the, the performance of a closed loop pulsating heat pipe. Next thing is the filling ratio. The filling ratio cannot be zero. If it is a zero, it will work like a solid. If it is a uh, filling ratio is 100%, it will work like a thermosiphon. So we require a filling ratio which is from somewhere around 30 to 70 percent of the total volume of the, the cap we can say tube is filled with the fluid so that is a filling ratio it can be around 30 to 70 percent compatibility of heat pipe material the compatibility of working fluid with the heat pipe material is also one of the parameters that affects the performance of a closed loop pulsating heat pipe next thing is the number of turns that is also affects the performance of a closed loop pulsating heat pipe in case of compatibility uh, sometimes some fluids are compatible with copper, some fluids are compatible with stainless steel, some fluids are compatible with aluminium. So these parameters, these things are also taken into consideration while select, while determining the purpose. Now see the boundary conditions of closed loop pulsating heat pipe. Now first thing you can observe is the diameter. So diameter cannot be too less, diameter cannot be too large. So if the diameter is less, say uh, it, it is considered to be around 2 to 3 mm. So it cannot be more than 3 mm because the capillary action will not take place. So the diameter is also one of the critical parameter. It cannot be too high. Other thing, uh, the diameter is, uh, after the diameter we have filling ratio. So once the filling ratio is concerned, so the filling ratio cannot be zero. The filling ratio cannot be a uh, hundred percent. So it must be certain value which is somewhere around 20 to 80 or somewhere around 30 to 70 depending on the we can say your experimental setup. So it's, if it is zero, it means that it is completely a solid which is transferring heat. If the filling ratio is taken as 100%, now if it is 100%, it means that it will work as a thermosiphon. So this is how the filling ratio is. So 0%, it cannot be there. It should not be there. It will work like a solid. If it is 100%, so it will work like a thermosiphon. Now next thing is the filling ratio whenever we are considering. So some range is always selected uh, around 30 to 70 percent. Now what is filling ratio? Filling ratio is the total volume of the fluid, total volume of the pipe which is filled with the fluid that is called as the filling ratio. Next thing a uh, heat input, heat input cannot be too low or heat input cannot be a too high. So heat input is too low it means in such cases you don't have the we can say the vapor formation that is taking place. If the heat input is too high, in such cases what will happen? The dry out of the working fluid will take place. So that is also, we can say, not good. So 
so we must have certain uh, we can say heat input it cannot be too high or as well as it cannot be too low so diameter then uh, the filling ratio and last one a uh, heat input next thing that is a temperature ranges of working fluid so these are some temperature ranges of working fluid say we have helium nitrogen ammonia acetone methanol ethanol heptane water so these are operating ranges so quite low operating ranges also there so we can say low operating ranges some medium operating ranges and then when we can have a high operating ranges also like say water if you consider 330 to 200 the next thing is the compatibility of working fluid so here the copper aluminum stainless steel nickel are mentioned so there are different working fluid water acetone ammonia and methanol so based upon the usage based upon the literatures and we say based upon some assumptions uh, these are the things which are mentioned so copper uh, recommended by usage acetone is also recommended by usage ammonia it is also recommended by usage so based upon the literatures which other researchers have done methanol also it is recommended by usage next one aluminum it may generate gases acetone recommended by literatures ammonia is recommended by usage methanol is recommended by literature stainless steel like is may be compatible with water and acetone recommended by usage for ammonia then may be compatible with methanol so next thing is nickel so these are some of the things uh, which is uh, we can say compatibility of the tube material with respect to the working fluid so that is also one of the parameter that has to be taken into consideration while selecting a working fluid for a given experimental setup the applications so thermal management of laptop using pulsating heat pipe thermal management of seal led lamp using pulsating heat pipe waste heat from electronic equipment can be utilized for drying satellite thermal control by using pulsating heat pipe so these are some of the applications this is one of the example of laptop cooling so here the cpu generates heat the cpu whatever the heat from the cpu is taken out with the help of this particular heat pipe arrangement and at other place what we have a fan which is rejecting which is responsible for rejecting heat from the fluid so this is how the continuous cycle is maintained so whatever the vapor form is there vapors are formed they are going towards the other section so heat is rejected from there and again the liquid is coming back to the the evaporated section so this is how the heat uh, we can see taken from the cpu so heat is rejected heat is absorbed so this is how the process is taking place in case of a, a, a heat pipe which is used in laptops then led lamps in led lamps also generate a uh, too much of heat so this heat can be taken out with the help of a pulsating heat pipe technology so you can provide the heat pipe at the back side of led lamps so that will take heat from the led lamps to the other section so this is how the cooling of led lamps can be done as we know uh, if you maintain the temperature of led lamps we can get the longer life span with the help, longer life span with the help of it, this particular we can see leds now next thing again the same if you have if you are cooling the leds or if you are cooling the electronic equipment it means that you are ensuring the longer life of the electronic devices next thing applications in electronic cooling so that is quite a uh, familiar example you can see this kind of things in your in case of your laptops the laptop uses pulsating heat pipe technology mostly to cool the you can say electronic equipment which are installed in the laptop so the cooling of cpu is actually done with the help of the pulsating heat pipe technology simultaneously you can observe a fan and some fins are also provided so this is an example where uh, we can use electronic cooling methods with the help of fan as well as with the help of a pulsating heat pipe technology so next thing the application which is in case of human body as we know underarms we have higher heat as compared to other part of the body so in case of winter season there can be some jackets that can be produced so that will um, keep heat to the portion where which is subjected to more cold condition like say your hands so the heat from the underarms can be given to the hand so this kind of uh, we can say the research that is going on on this particular we can say heat pipe which is used to wear in the clothes so this is for thermal management or temperature regulation system of it human body 
So again, this is one of the example where we are maintaining the temperature of lady lamp so as to ensure the longer lifespan of the lady. Uh, another application is uh, it can be used for graphics card. So thermal management of graphics card can also be done with the help of this pulsating heat pipe technology. Uh, again, another example, a surgical probe incorporated thing in a cryogenic heat pipe is used to destroy tumors in the human body. The cryo probe is a handheld device with a reservoir of liquid nitrogen and 12 inch heat pipe extension which is maintained at approximately 77 Kelvin nearly for one half hour. So this again one of the applications which relates to medical field. Uh, 